Next we'll take a look at help desk systems. So this is again just another piece of uh, software out there that you can purchase separately from all the other management software that we've been talking about so far. So when it comes to help desk systems, these are just things that we want to make sure that we find uh, in the help desk system and processes that it uh, should perform. So trouble ticketing and tracking. Whenever you uh, submit a uh, email to the help desk system or sometimes they have a form that you fill out on the help desk system to identify who you are and what your problem is, they refer to that as a trouble ticket. And once the trouble ticket has been initiated, then the next thing is that it, it needs to be tracked down the road to make sure that it is followed up on and that the issues do get resolved. Also, help desk systems should include asset management. Remember, we were talking a bit ago about keeping track of what computers we have within the network, what operating systems they're running, um, all the information about all the components in those computers, CPU, hard drives, network cards, etc. Change management. A lot of help disk systems have the ability to affect change on the systems. Maybe uh, software updates like uh, Word, Excel, you know, application updates. Integration with the event management system. So when we were talking about the uh, databases earlier in the transaction processing, remember those were uh, systems that were managing events. Support of business specific processes and procedures. So we want to make sure that the help desk is aligned with the business and the way that they th see things should be handled. Call center management has become a really big aspect of help desk systems because we have to be able to distribute phone calls because a lot of communications with help desk is, is over the phone. And so we have to be able to distribute the phone calls, you know, the workload of the incoming calls. We need to be able to track calls and, and things of that nature. And then search engines also is a, a big aspect of the help desk system because many times those that are providing the help um, don't know all the answers. If you've ever been to any tech support site and you've been to level one techs, you know what I'm talking about. They basically know nothing, um, but they'll search out the problem as you identify it to them and then a screen comes up and then they read it to you line by line and they hope that solves your problem. Not always a, a highly reliable way of doing things, but the idea is that we accumulate within the help desk system what we call a knowledge base. And in the knowledge base then we store solutions, problem solutions, so that uh, anybody else that comes along and has a similar problem we can look up and see what solutions have worked in the past. If you want to take a look at some additional uh, help desk software functionality, you go to page 442 in your book. And you'll see a couple of pages there, 442, 443, and and several categories. Again, just basically these are uh, functions that we would expect to find within any help desk system. And again, really too much to cover during class time. We get into a little bit more detail now about asset management because you might recall there on the help desk screen they were talking about one of the functions should be asset management. Um, electronic Software Distribution or ESD is very common when it comes to asset management. Again, the idea is that we're able to install software. This is called push. I think I mentioned that to you before, but that's a good term to know as well. Anytime that you are taking a software component and sending it out to the desktops, that's referred to as a push operation. Um, we may need to update configuration files on the computers. We may need to be uh, updating the software. And so in all cases, we're pushing out that information from our ESD to the, the desktops and, and even perhaps the servers. And then license metering software, again, is, is very important. We need to ensure legal usage of the software. So this software is designed to do exactly that. Every time a program gets loaded up, it's tracking how many users are, are using an application. Sometimes the programs are loca located locally on the desktops. Other times they're actually located on servers. And everybody actually is connecting through the network to a server and, and they download the code from the server onto their system, put it in their system's memory, and, and they use the application. Um, but the actual original installation of the software is actually on a server. Um, the advantage we get there, it's, it's a lot easier to update instead of having to update every single desktop. 
Um, one of the, th the main aspect of license metering originally was to do just this first task here, ensuring that we are within the legal parameters of the usage of that software, that we don't have more users using the software than we have licenses. But a new technology has come out of license metering that was, again, not its original intended purpose, and it's referred to as license optimization. With license optimization now, we actually, as a company, can be more efficient with the usage of these licenses. And so we can have dynamic allocation of the licenses. Say we have 100 licenses but 1,000 employees. Well, all 1,000 employees aren't using that application simultaneously. So by dynamically allocating licenses, we can make sure that w within the range of the 100, um, each user that needs to have access can, you know, up to that, that limit of 100. Load balancing, uh, global license sharing, so if we're in a very large enterprise-wide network, we can have licenses at the right location at the right time for the necessary use of the software. And then the, the, the metering software itself uses an API, you know, everything basically has an API to it, and it's referred to as the licensing server API or the LSAPI. And then the third component here of asset management would be our LAN inventory management software. And this is gathering information then about the hardware and software um, within the actual local area network. So again, routers, switches would be the best examples of what we find within the, the local area network. And then the software that's running on them as well.